Hey there, folks. I think we are live. Welcome, everyone, to the stream tonight. Got my special guest here, Marcus Maximus Mera. How you doing, Marcus? Hi, how's it going? I'm good. We got 20 people here already right now. Awesome. We're going to be playing uh, Space Quest, the original one from 1986, the EGA version. Gonna you got to give me a people. second because I don't even have the... Uh... The game in front of me up yet. Yeah. All right, well, get, go ahead, take your time, get in there. Can you can you can you drop the link into the chat for me? The, uh, the sure, 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 sure. I will do that for you. Yes, thank you. How's everybody doing? Yes, uh, Space Quest One, one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah, it's a pretty awesome game. Two guys from Andromeda. I actually got that black box version of the game not too long ago. Um, yeah, but I was a little curious about the, the, you know, they come with those little slips inside those coupons. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about the droids, BS, droids, BS coupon and the, uh, what's the other one? I forget. Yeah. Now. What's the other one? Droids, BS. And then it was, uh, droids are us. Well, droids. So originally the game, in the, in the original version of the game, I think in this version we're going to play here, it was droids are us and then toys are us sued them. Or they threatened to sue them, so they changed the droids be us instead. Um, so that was one of the coupons. The, the other one was for what the hell was it? Oh, the bar, the bar, the the the, uh, the Ulids Flats bar. Hey, oh, okay. Ninja, how's it going? So we got a bunch of people in the chat. Um, I don't know. I, the statistics that YouTube gives are like always weird, but I think there's like 20 people here, or at least there was a second ago. Brandon Bloom, J Rock, Paolo, Ninja, Scotty, Dangerously. Epic Potato, Arish Kogol, that's an interesting name, Arish Kogol, I don't know how you pronounce that, but uh, thanks everyone for joining, we're going to kick this off in a second, did you able to get in Marcus, can you see the stream? Uh, yeah, All right. oh look, we got some chats going on. Yeah, people are in the chat, so guys, um, how, how, is anybody excited for the fact that we're making a new game with Ken and Roberta Williams? I'm excited. <laughs> I mean, how... <laughs> I'm How sure a lot of people cool are excited. is that? Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are excited. Um, just if you're new to this channel, folks, first of all, welcome here. Obviously, we got a really cool special event tonight with Marcus um, Marcus Maximus Mera here, who's one of the main developers of the new game that uh, Ken and Roberta Williams have been working on. And then uh, I believe Ken himself will be making an appearance as well. So we got a really special uh, event tonight. I usually just stream random stuff. For tonight, we're actually streaming something good space quest um so uh if you're if you're not used to this channel basically we love to interact with the chat so please uh you know type in the chat tell us what you're thinking if you have any questions you want to ask marcus if you have any questions you want to ask ken when he shows up please go ahead and put him in the chat we'll do our best to cover them um and uh maybe marcus will get the, get the game started I'll, I'll quit actually so we can see the titles uh let me do that right now but uh in the meantime do you want to just introduce yourself quickly and you know, tell us who you are what you're doing Oh yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, I come from, uh, I'm an artist, uh, but I, I come from a, uh, a, a jewelry background. And, uh, uh, you know, jewelry, we use 3D, we use 3D. Early adopter, I think, model. Wait a second. Allowed me to, you know, become a really great 3D artist. So when I uh, connected with Ken, I kind of told him, I said, hey, you know, I actually know how to do 3D art. And uh, it was the start of our working relationship. And uh, I actually have quite a good, you know, art, 3D art skills. And uh, we're making a beautiful game. I got to tell you, people are like worried. You know, it, it's, it's, it looks really great. Is it going to be like state of the art, uh, the most, uh, crazy unreal graphics no but it's going to be amazing 3d graphics so it's it's it, we're really excited about it so somebody just hello katie one two three said what can you tell us about the new game so i guess you already started to talk about the new game here so uh you're, you're hello katie i think that this whole stream is going to be getting like little little tidbits about information interesting information um hey pickle dog our, our ish kogol right, i'm gonna start this again with the sound because i, I had to cut the sound out because i wouldn't be able to hear you marcus so let me do this again all right just i want to hear this second. cool sound yeah. at the beginning of the space quest game let's uh hold on let's kill this here let's do this one more time with sound 
I don't know who wrote the sound for Space Quest 1. Um, it's, not, it's, not, it's not credit to anybody. I don't know if it's like Alan or somebody else, but... Hey, Deluxe Game, how's it going? Hey, Defender, how you doing? True gamers know that Indies where it's at. Yeah. <laughs> so Ken Williams actually was one of, the, one of the developers of this game, one of the programmers. Programmed mostly by Scott Murphy, but you saw that Ken Williams listed as a development grant. So Paolo Quattorici says, Hi Marcus, how did you end up working with Ken Williams? How did it happen? Did you pitch the game idea or Ken reached out to you? So, uh, a very interesting story. I um, belong to the big box PC collectors group and I, I uh, you know, came, uh, uh, started hunting games down. And one day I, uh, I basically uh, found King's Quest available on Facebook Marketplace. And when I went to go pick it up, it was King's Quest and Adventures in Serenia. Um, and nice. <laughs> I uh, posted it on the group and uh, a pretty well-known collector messaged me. He's like, dude, now you finally have something I want. So I knew I had something. Um, and, and so I called up the Vintage Computer Festival here in uh, New Jersey. It was like two weeks. It was going to be a, 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 the big festival. And... Uh, so I pitched the idea. I said, hey, you guys always show like vintage computers. Why don't we show this games that I found that are pretty rare and talk about Sierra and its history? And Jeff's like, hey, Marcus, that's a great idea. Uh, and by the way, Ken Williams is also uh, going to be presenting at the <laughs> festival. Nice. So we can have you lead into him. And I was like, oh, what? Ken Williams? What? The guy that like, you know, designed the game, you know, that made the game. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. So I messaged Enrico, who's the guy that was the collector, and I'm like, yo, uh, I don't know nothing about King's Quest. I mean, I know Space Quest, I know Sierra, but I don't know anything about King's Quest. He's like, well, I know Ken Williams. Why don't I make an introduction to you? I'm like, uh, yeah, hello, that sounds a great idea. So he makes the introduction, and I'm like, hi, Ken. Um, I'm Marcus. I don't know anything about King's Quest, and I'm going to be doing a presentation. He's like, well, I just so happened I wrote a book about our – the whole company. Well, why don't I send you a copy of it so you'll it's know what we're talking here, right? about? Fairy tale. Well, not all fairy tales of happy endings by yeah, Ken Williams. So, yeah, this is the book right here. So uh, I actually started reading the book, and you know, I got a great. Hey, hey, Marcus! Holy cow! Somebody just popped into the chat here. <laughs> oh wait, I'm renaming myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ken Williams, everybody! Holy cow, Ken! It's Hi. awesome to see you. Joining you from outer space. <laughs> Marcus was just talking about how he... We didn't even start the game yet. Marcus was just talking about how he met you, how you guys got started working on the game. And uh, the people in the chat are very excited that you see, to see you show up. Somebody said, Ken is here. And uh, well, we, we, got, we got a bunch of people here right now interacting, so it's pretty cool. Well, Welcome. I to see why, uh, why Marcus is chatting instead of working. <laughs> we're shipping a game here. What's going on? <laughs> you know, we got to have a little fun sometimes, Ken. You know, oh. I can't, can't always be working away. That's no, legendary like Ken Williams uh, work ethic, right? So this this game, the Space Quest, as, you, as people know, had this Easter egg that Scott and Mark and Scott put in. If you type in Ken, oh. Ken comes and complains. <laughs> you want to, Ken, can you read that? Are you able to see the screen? Or <laughs> what? Oh, there it is. I see. Uh, I see. Um... Yeah, it says, is it shipping yet? I want this thing shipping yesterday. That's funny. I thought you said the graphics would be done last week. So that, you, is, uh, that is very me. That was my famous line. I used to always go in and ask everybody, is it shipping yet and why not? <laughs> so, so if but, nothing uh, else, folks, got we, got to hear, we got to hear Ken actually read that line and speak it live. Some, somebody record that. We'll put it in the voice acting version of Space Quest when it comes out. <laughs> Ken, Ken, we don't have the code ready and you are the programmer. Oh, I know. It's not fair. I like the old days better where I could uh, just bitch and everybody else. So, so Ken, since you're here, um, I think one question that a lot of people have is why are you making a new game? Like, what inspired you all of a sudden to start doing this? And before people were asking Marcus how he got involved, but what made you decide to do this? Um, stupidity? For lack of a better word no i don't know I, I i just like to code i like you know you've got to stay busy you can't just sit around and let your brain rot and uh, i finished the book and i was trying to think of something to do and then 
somebody talked about unity this um, kind of um, development environment and I got curious what it was and um, then I don't know then I started thinking may I code up some sort of little kids game and then Roberta said that was a stupid idea <laughs> and um, then she suggested an alternate idea and then I kind of started coding on it but uh, wasn't sure I was going to actually finish the thing but then I met Marcus and um, and then I don't know then he was committed and uh, between the two of us uh, we're both I think kind of workaholics and things started happening it's sort of funny that Roberta said that's a stupid idea because like what she's famous for making kids games, right? I mean, like mixed up mother goose, for example, was one of the most successful games that Sierra had and like had, I don't know, four different versions or something. So what happened now? Why should she not, not to kids games anymore? <laughs> I don't know. Well, and some of my favorite Sierra games were some of our kids games, um, you know, incredible machine and um, all of the Dr. Brain games I thought were pretty cool. So, um, yeah, I was thinking more something along the line of like Dr. Brain, or I wanted to do something to teach kids to program, but um, well, I got sidetracked, and you know how that goes. And well, actually, Roberta, think, Roberta likes Phantas like Phantasmagoria was not a kids game. So clearly, she likes to, she likes to, to push the envelope at times. Yeah, Phantasmagoria was probably my favorite of all time game, and uh, really depressed that we never um, did that in high res. I mean, at the time. Yeah, it was already on seven D or seven CDs. I guess it was CDs in those days, and um, yeah, and the graphics were real clunky and low res. I wish somebody had saved all the videotape and that we could re-release a uh, super high res version. I think that someone at least nice. put a patch a out game. there. I think someone at least put a patch out there to deinterlace the video. I'm pretty sure there's a patch for that at least. I mean, I don't know if it's like just AI or what, but there's something for that. So, um, folks in the chat, like, if you have any questions for Ken, you know, now's the time. Don't don't hold back. You got anything to say? You're, you're, I, I don't actually have a question. Answer. When 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 this space quest was pitched to you, did you actually like the idea immediately, or was it something that you needed to be convinced into liking the game? Um, yeah, at Space Quest, when I first well, you know, first they were talking to me about doing it, and I kind of blew them off because Mark was an artist and Scott was a uh, QA guy. And, um, I, I, you know, I had no belief they could actually deliver a game, and I didn't want them sidetracking from other games they were on. But kind of on their own, they did a demo of it, and then I saw it and fell in love. So it, um, yeah, but they actually had to take it to a working demo before I would uh, buy off on it. And then it became probably my favorite series. You know, uh, Space Quest and Leisure Suit Larry were all, because they made me smile, and they made me laugh, and they were funny, and... And Mark and Scott were such funny guys, so it, it, yeah, I love that series. It was, de it was definitely my my two favorite series as well. Oh, yeah, I, I think same here, actually. <laughs> but I like them all; they're all good. So, so Ken, um, Matt Williams, who I think is not related to you, but he's in the chat, and he he says basically when well, he read your book, and he said he was taken aback that you seemed surprised at how much interest there still was in Sierra. So is that is that true? Are you surprised like how many people still care about Sierra, and how does that make you feel? Yeah, it's kind of I, well because we had kind of defocused from it. I mean, I was busy thinking about boating and being retired, and uh, we were living in Mexico, and I just really wasn't paying attention at all. And then when I wrote my book and started talking about it, and I realized there were uh, Facebook groups all over the place that were Sierra centric, and. Um, yeah, it just, uh, I mean, it's been 25 years, 28 years or something since we sold the company. So that's pretty, pretty wild. But uh, who would think that people would still remember us 25 years later? So. Well, it's, a lot of people, that may have, you know, Sierra was a very important part of a lot of people's childhood and formative years, right? I mean, that's, uh, yeah. I think a lot of people are watching this and not people interested in the new game because they're just so excited about uh, about another another Sierra style game, and uh, I guess on that note, uh, I think I heard that there was some new information to reveal or something like that. I don't know if you want to reveal that now or, or later, but uh, I'm sure everyone's excited to hear more about the game. Oh, I yeah, I don't want to derail this with. Uh... <laughs> say, I, you know, I'll, let, I'll let Marcus do all that. It's, uh, okay, no problem. I just hope people like it. You know, it's really, you know, it's a lot of work. And, you know, you want 
to believe that when people get it, they're going to, yeah, they, that they're going to like it. And, and I can say that it's a, um, turned out way better than I expected. When Marcus and I first started, I had real doubts that uh, two people could actually produce a game worth playing. And even before we started, I kind of said I thought it was impossible. And one of the reasons I didn't want to try to do anything that um, most people would want to play, because ultimately, can you really do something that looks good? But for whatever reason, Marcus, um, Marcus is a great artist, and it came together. So I'm, I'm very happy with how it's turning out. That's great. I mean, and if, I mean, from what I from what I don't know of you, but from what I've read about you, I mean, it seems like you always loved to code, and you mentioned that before. And you loved solving problems that were, you know, tough problems, like how to get the graphics on the screen, how to get the graphics in color. And I, mean, I showed you this book before that I picked up recently. That I'm looking forward to reading uh, that you wrote. Um, is this is this a lot of this about now, like about solving new puzzles and coding, or is it more about creative expression, making a game, or is it both? Or just having a good time? Yeah, it, I don't know. It's I, I, I was <laughs> jealous. I, you know, I always thought that the people that worked for Sierra had the best game in the world, you know, or the best uh, job in the world. And was because I was stuck being a bureaucrat while they got to have all the fun and design the games and code the games. And you know, I'd come in, and I'd pitch ideas once in a while, but they had all the fun while I was riding on an airplane or working with accountants on balance sheets. So I think some of it is just... Um, you know, fulfillment for me of being able to actually create a game that I worked on, not um, not just watching other people have all the fun. So, you know, I, I don't know that I'll do um, um, lots and lots of games. This was kind of um, realization of a dream from, uh, you know, uh, what, 20 years at Sierra watching other people get all the fun. Well, to that point, though, Ken, like, you know, I'm used to, from the past, seeing all the catalogs and you, you and Roberta, the, you know, the pictures and you're the president of the company and you're the big cheese. But as a collector, you know, with having a lot of the older Sierra and online systems titles, I'm amazed, like, how many of them you actually were directly involved in, especially in the early days. You coded a lot of stuff before you sort of moved to the corner office and started running the company. So, I mean, I, yeah. I guess... It was probably was you know, as a as an ex programmer myself. It's probably hard to walk away from that, and it must feel pretty good to get back in that game. I mean, I would think. I can vouch for Ken being an extremely hard worker, problem solver, <laughs> and I'm just fortunate I got him now when he's patient, because he was very very patient, especially in the beginning, when dealing with, you know, the issues that we were dealing with at the very beginning of designing the game. So, um, can Scott McAfee wants to know, are there any other Sierra folks involved with the game, like Allo or anybody else like that, aside from you, Roberta? Uh, nope. Nope. It's, um, yeah, I, I've, um, I assume once we get, uh, anywhere near beta tests that, you know, Allo and probably other ex Sierra people will want to be, uh, play testing. So, um, yeah, I, well, and I, I saw, you know, on the, on the beta tester sign up, a lot of, Sierra names I recognize, but uh, no, it's really just the two of us, and um, and that's it. Yeah, I, I, I saw Allo today, and I was talking to him about the game and uh, trying to lure him into um, <laughs> greater participation. But he's pretty happily retired, so we should just get him to do the music or something. That's like his true passion, right? I mean, yeah, I, yeah. Actually, if I asked him to do some music, he uh, he certainly would, but. Um, uh, so sounds sure. a good idea. I, you know, we're, at this point, I just want to get the darn thing <laughs> running. You know, we're, we're right on the edge, I think, within a week or two of being able to play through the game for the first time. And um, and then, you know, four or five or six months of um, just making it better and better and better and trying to really polish it up. But, uh, so it's, it's kind of a kind of a key time or kind of a good time, I guess. I, I think we could tell them that it's a 3D game. That it's a we can say that yeah <laughs> definitely 3d that um, yeah and, I, and, and we and we can admit that it's an adventure game and that it's a 3d adventure and I've seen a lot of 2d and two and a half d adventures but not that many 3d and uh, 3d is tough it's um, you know, hats off to Marcus it's tough to work in 3d and for me it was you know another kind of excitement because at uh, Sierra, I never got to really work on any of the 3D games. 
know, those were all done at down dynamics. And uh, we really didn't work in 3D until King's Quest VIII when uh, they worked on it. And then it was quite a struggle. So, well, I think people, a lot of... people are concerned that it's going to be like King's Quest VIII. <laughs> and I'm trying to tell them it's really not. I, yeah, I think pe a lot of people are probably really super excited to hear it's going to be an adventure. And then like, they're like, are you really, is it really an adventure? You're not tricking us. Promise it's really an adventure. Not going to be like a you know, fighting game or something like that or a shooting game. No. <laughs> that, uh, I mean, there were some shooting games that I liked. Yeah, we so you guys uh, a lot of good games. But nope, nope, this good old fashioned adventure. That's what, uh, yeah, that's what I think people kind of want right now. It's, uh, but it's different, you know, something different in the market. And so we could too. try to make it a VR game as well like playable in vr we're going to test it out and see if it works yeah theoretically unity is not too hard to get to uh, oculus and do three 3d at this point i just don't even want to think about that i want to get the game running yeah sorry playing get uh and then we start putting on the bells and whistles so at this point we just got to get it running so ken matt matt williams had another question and i think it's a really good one what do you think was the secret sauce to sierra being so successful in the in the 80s and 90s do you think it was the people or something else what, what, what's the secret to the success of the company in, in those days the golden years well, some of it was just really caring about customers I mean, we were um every everything we did revolved around happy customers and just a belief that if people liked you they would buy your games and so interaction uh, magazine and um you know, remember we sent out those um, uh, floppy disks at Christmas to everybody that was on our list. Yep. You know, we we really. Um, so I guess I mean, it was the people and the products we created, but it was really kind of a uh, an intense focus on happy customers and trying to figure out what they wanted, and uh, try to love them to death and think of the lifetime value of a customer. And that, um, you know, it's like a restaurant. If, if you ever go into a restaurant and get one bad meal, you're probably never going to go back. <laughs> so we had to, um, we just had to do something good every single time. And we had to um, break new ground constantly. Uh, we, we, you know, one, well, somebody somewhere along the line said um, that, um, you know, leaders lead and followers follow. And we perceived ourselves as leaders and that um, we kind of had to figure out where the industry was going and get there first. And it was, um, and so I think our customers picked up on that and knew to kind of watch what we were doing and uh, that kind of guided where the industry was going. I mean, it was just a nice time. We were there. I mean, there was, you know, today there's probably got to be a thousand software companies or something. And in those days, there were like five or six. So in some ways, I mean, the secret sauce was get there early and be the only game in town. Yeah. No, I, for, uh, early into the market and to your point i think you talked about in your book as well how sierra create like sort of drove the pc hardware market almost like by creating innovations for sound cards and things like that and yeah. you guys had the first major online service you know it was graphical and did a lot of amazing stuff so by the way yeah, en en enrico ricciardi is on the chat and he says he wants to know ken if the game is going to be presented on, on your boat with a big party for the uh the launch yeah. of the game <laughs> Uh, my boat is not all that big. Yet, uh, I, I'm hoping that more people buy the game than will fit on my boat. That would uh, that would be a pretty small market. <laughs> I think uh, you're gonna get are, a lot of. I, literally, I will be building the game over the next three months from on my boat. Roberta and I'll be um, cruising and living on the boat for the next three months on a little sixty foot boat. So that'll I, be kind of fun. I think you're gonna get also, a lot more. We can also confirm game. it's gonna be a. Uh... Okay. Uh, big box version of the game as well it's definitely going to have a box version yeah. a physical version of the game old school I, style yeah, marcus talked me into it so anyway, <laughs> I, I didn't mean to disrupt derail your uh, whole, whole thing here not, uh, not at all ken i'm gonna go get dinner and i'll let you guys keep having fun can i ask you one question before you leave sir sure Somebody asked a, another good question. Hello, Katie123. Where can we follow the progress and buy the game? Is there a mailing list they can sign off for, or a pre-order, or something like that? Or just wait for more details? Yeah, I, I mean, watch the site, uh, kensgame.com, and we'll post info there. And I, you know, I, I, I'm even thinking of doing a blog there to kind of talk about the technology and stuff we're doing and 
but certainly we'll talk first about what we're working on and show screenshots. And so I'd say just watch Ken's game .com and um, definitely register. I think for the next month, I won't post a whole lot, but once, um, once we get kind of past this first hurdle of having a fully playable game, then I'll have a little more free time to uh, post up there. That's amazing. And, and someone just said, I'm going to Ken's game .com because Ken sent me, which I think is pretty yeah, clever. Ken said, actually, I think it says Ken sent me right on the front page. I can't believe it. It's funny. I, I, I saw somebody one day wearing a T-shirt that said Ken sent me, and then I went to uh, Amazon or on Google, and I Googled Ken sent me. It's all over the place. There are really a lot of T-shirts out there that say that, and that's a uh, – aloe picking on me a pun <laughs> from 40 years ago and somehow it survived well ken enjoy enjoy your dinner thanks for stopping by feel free to come by later if you want but you know thank you again and we'll you'll know, keep on talking to marcus yeah, and learn some more about the game me. thank you for doing this and keeping space quest alive a great great game Our don't pleasure. worry the graphics will be done and ready for tomorrow ken okay yeah we can do them <laughs> goop around too much get to work see ya bye thank you ken bye bye Oh man, that was pretty awesome, wasn't it? Oh, so much fun. So we obviously, folks, you know, we're going to keep on talking, and and I'll talk to Marcus, who's the one, who's the, the main developer on this game. We're going to keep on talking and playing as we play through this game. I, I just started; I couldn't like just leave it on one screen for a while, Marcus. I started playing a little bit. Oh, but, that's okay. But uh, I will. I do want to actually just for some people who haven't played this before, you know, a couple things to just note. So this is the Tandy One Thousand version. Or the PC Junior sound or whatever it has the three three channel on sound. Version one, right? Version one point oh. Version one point oh X, which has the, the the Ken Easter egg. It's the only version that has it because Ken found it afterwards and he had it removed. Um, and actually, if you go uh, if you go back here and you try to do that again, we should have asked him about this. But we'll, we can ask him offline. If you go back here and try to type Ken again, it says Dave. Dave's not here. So I don't know what, what that means. <laughs> I'll, I'll message him. So, uh, get there and let me take a screenshot. Yeah, I, I sent you a screenshot of that before. So uh, what, what's the chat saying? So, uh, oh, B3, B3L4, so I can only hear the game, nothing of you guys. Now this is all good. Okay, so hopefully that was you fixed the problem on your side. Dave's not here as a comedy routine, Brandon Bloom? I didn't know that, is it? Oh, Cheech and Chong quote, someone said. Okay, I didn't know that. It's a Cheech Come and Chong guys. quote. Aren't you excited it's a 3D adventure game? I am extremely excited. I mean, like, you know, I think, like, a lot of people, like, just want to sort of wait and see what happens. But, like, if we get a, a new Sierra-style adventure, you know, I mean, I don't, okay, I guess it's going to have, like, tons of deaths, you know. <laughs> That's part of a Sierra-style adventure is you can die every single turn. I mean, it, 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 you know it. <laughs> right. I'm, so, asking, I'm asking Ken, who's Dave? <laughs> if we get a real Sierra-style adventure um, in 3D or not 3D, frankly, I mean, I'll be freaking awesome. So, guys, if by the way, if, if you're if you're not regulars in this channel, um, you know, appreciate all the folks who hit like and all that. You know, feel free to subscribe. We do a lot of cool stuff here. But uh, we're gonna I'm gonna keep playing through the game, and you know, Marcus, uh, we'll keep on chatting about what what you've been doing and what you're working on. Uh, but I think the most exciting thing to me is the fact that there's gonna be a new game by Ken and and Roberta's involved too. Correct? It's not yeah, just 100%. Ken. Yeah, hundred percent. And and. And I, 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 I believe that as we get, see, the thing is when Roberta says to change something, you got to deliver it immediately. So I noticed that one point in the beginning, she was like, you know, she asked me to change something. And when we didn't change it right away, you know, I got this kind of vibe, like, why is it not done yet? And <laughs> uh, I, I told Ken, I said, we, we better, we better like, do what she says <laughs> so i'm like uh we better do what she says so let's let's wait till we prototype the whole thing and then i can go back and do those changes because then i can concentrate on them because it's really hard to create levels and stuff like that and world create uh while going and working on details so we're getting to the point where we're gonna go and start concentrating on the details and, and the refinement and that's when i believe she's really gonna come in and and uh you know i mean I, Besides the fact that she's the total inspiration of this game, she's already made some comments, and I'm, I'm always reminded of that. But I really do believe she will come in and, and have a, you know, I mean, her, her name's on the press release. Her name is on the, it's going to be on the game box. It, she's going to say what to, to do here. There's a story in the, um, in Ked's book, I believe, where he talks about how 
he went to a meeting and um, Roberta came to the meeting and like the people, whoever was meeting with, I can't remember now, didn't take her seriously. He just oh, thought, was like, it she... Border Bun or was it, sp... no, it was, it was uh, one of those... Spinnacle. Something Spinnacle. about a merger. Yeah, I don't remember what company it was. It was Spinnacle, and... Spinnacle. Sp... Yeah, Spinnacle, whatever it was. And then like basically they didn't take her seriously. They thought he's like the boss and she's just the tag along. And then uh, she basically put them all in their place and made it very clear that she was the one in charge. So, um, <laughs> I think I, I believe you. I 100 get the feeling of how she works, and it's uh, it's pretty intense. And it's the kind of thing is you got to deliver, you got to deliver it. So, you know, I do know for sure that it's it. She'll. I, I just have a feeling it's going to happen. That she's going to get fully immersed in it, and um, I'm hoping. As a Sierra fan, and this is this is what I, I, I don't want to say that I convinced Ken because I really didn't. It, you know, I believe writing the book brought all those Sierra feelings back to him. Hearing everybody talk about it, at, at, you know, at the Vintage Computer Festival and afterwards, I stayed in contact with him, and then I just said this to him: I go, "Wouldn't it be great, Ken, if?" you were to come back and take over Sierra like Steve Jobs did at Apple <laughs> and take it to you in great heights. And he was like grinning and he was like, uh, well, I'm working on something. I said, well, it just so happens I'm a 3D artist and love to get involved. It's said, pretty oh, awesome. I didn't know you were a 3D artist. I'll be in touch with you in two weeks. And literally on the money in two weeks, he contacted me and said, hey, Marcus, what are you up to? I'm like, Anything you want, boss. Anything you need, <laughs> just tell me. I'm in it. So let's look check in the chat here. Um, first of all, Scott says I was super tempted to ask Ken about his mustache maintenance, but I have too much respect for the man. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> I was thinking of photoshopping his mustache off and seeing what he would look like, and sending it to Roberta. <laughs> 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 this is what he would look like <laughs> his mustache but then I don't want to you know get in trouble <laughs> yeah no hello katie 123 said save constantly noted yeah these games you have to save constantly because Sierra like will kill you any any chance they get and Scott also said quest for glory 5 style yeah that's actually interesting so quest for glory 5 was also a 3d game I actually never beat that one um, I didn't quite uh, get far enough in it, but um, that was a 3D game that did sort of well. I mean, it took forever to develop it. Uh, hey, Al's Geek Lab, how's it going? That's a great name, Al's Geek Lab. <laughs> is that, is that make, a make his mustache an NFT. <laughs> Matt, says, <laughs> Matt says you should wombo Ken and send it to Roberta. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show my ignorance here. What's wombo? Yeah, what is a wombo? I don't know. It it's probably some freakish uh, thing. Look. Okay, so aren't you supposed to get the... Uh... You're supposed to get the suit here, right? Yeah, I, you know what? I haven't played this game in so long. Like, and I, and, the, and when I did, I used to have the the VGA version as a kid. I never owned the EGA version. Oh, I played Space. I, got a pretty, I think I got a pretty rare version of the game just recently. With the backwards screenshot. I got the Macintosh version of the VGA box. Oh, nice. So, do you see it? Because I can't tell. Yeah, I, it's like it's like coming in and out. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me turn off the filter. Thing. Actually, hold on. Let me save the game. Second, guys, sorry. Malfunctioning background. None. Oh, yes, this one. So, right, this is a. Uh, it's the VGA box, but it says for Macintosh, so I have no idea what this one looks like. It's probably very, it's got, very similar. Well, yeah, it's got like pretty. The box graphics look really good. Uh, it says color max only, so it's got to be. This is 8 bit. No, 256 colors, so it's going to be similar to the EGA. Yeah, no, so uh, I, I, the first, I think I told you this before, but the first Sierra game I ever played was King's Quest Two, at someone's house. Oh, I used to go to their house just to play the game because I liked the game and I didn't like the guy so much, but like, he eventually figured out and like didn't let me come anymore. But uh, the first games I ever played after that at my own house was Space Quest Two and Police Quest One, which I pirated from someone at school. And then the first game I ever bought for Sierra was Space Quest 3. After I finished Space Quest 2, I, like, wanted to play Space Quest 3, like, right away. And I, like, begged, like, my dad to buy it for me, I remember, and he did. And, um, I never played Space Quest 1 until the VGA version came out. Then it, went, then it was, like, their Sierra was selling for, like, 20 bucks. It was, like, a sale to try to clear out the VGA versions, and that's when I finally played it. So, I'm used to the VGA version, um, not this one. So, that's why I'm, like, you know, sort of guessing what I'm doing here. 
but uh, hopefully well, okay. I won't get too killed. Well, let's get, a, let's, let's get a walkthrough, maybe. <laughs> no, no, man, call me to a walkthrough. So, yeah, so that's a good question. Um, oh, by the Wombo, it turns out, is an app that makes an image of a face lip sync to music according to Epic Potato. So, um, have you played King's Quest V, Marcus? I'm mean, not sorry, no, not King's I, Quest V, Quest for Glory V, I meant to say. Um, no. Um, so, let's see. What Sierra games I played? I played Space Quest Four, which is probably my favorite one. Uh, actually, Space Quest Three and Space Quest Four. Those are both really great. Um, so it's kind of a toss-up between those two. Um, I played Leisure Suit Larry, of course. Um, I love that game. And then I played a lot of Dynamics games, I'm thinking. Like, uh, what was that? The one with the, the Age of Empire? Not Age of Empire. The Dragon? What was it? Rise of the Dragon? Rise of the Dragon, yeah. Yeah, I played that one. Um, that was a great game. I played a bunch of Sierra games, for sure, back in the day. Um, over the years. Um, yeah, it's great. It's there, there are very. I actually have a letter that I received from them when I was a kid. Look what I just happened. The envelope. <laughs> we, we, we dicked around too much and we died. <laughs> All right, I got. I'll restore from the save game. That's fine. Keep on talking, Marcus. I'm sorry. At least everyone yeah, got no, to see the I, But I never actually really enjoyed, or it wasn't my. I wouldn't say enjoyed. I just I was wasn't ready. my flavor. Was the King's Quest games. I, I, I was more of an Ultima guy. And I would play um, uh, uh, Ultima 4, Ultima 5, all the way up to 7. So, and, and th those games were more my my flavor just because it was more Dungeons and Dragons kind of Seven. style. And uh, King's Quest was more a fairy tale kind of style. And it just didn't resonate with me uh, to play that game. Uh, I'm sure I tried to, but uh, never really finished those games. And I guess those puzzles were really extremely hard as well. Like, I would never figure out that, uh, some of those puzzles, for sure. <sighs> Damn it. I may have to go back further, like, to, uh, to avoid this. I thought if I, I thought if I go in fast mode, it would help, but maybe it made it worse. I'll try one more time. It's probably, some of the chat said, um, you, you don't need, oh, you need to press control F11. <sighs> this pickle dog said this version is old enough, the timer runs through the intro. Someone else said we don't need a, a walkthrough because we have a chat through of Sierra, chat full of Sierra fans. Well, I, I got to be honest with you. There's such a delay. I don't really know where you're at right now because it's like. Oh, really? Right now, it's like yeah, it, should, it should be only like a 10 second delay, but maybe it's uh, a little bit longer than that. It should be only 10 seconds. I'm going to try to do this. If I can't do this from here, I'm going to have to restore back and, and do it again. And I'll be able to put it in fast mode. We got 30 people here watching right now, by the way. Oh, nice. It's. I'm popular. I guess nobody really cared about Ken. No, no I kidding. think I think people do care a lot about Ken. I think people <laughs> are hoping Ken's gonna come back. Brian Piroff says, Hi, tell Marcus I said hi. Mr. Piroff. <laughs> and uh yeah, and, and so Adriel Isaacs is asking Marcus, did you play the Quest for Glory games? You, so you're saying before which games you played. Yeah, I mean I remember Quest for Glory. Uh I don't think I played those. How did I think of it? Um, you know, Ultima was Come really on. like the game I played a lot, and but I have a notebook taking notes of the quests and stuff like that. And, and it, I gotta tell you, those games back then took years to beat. You know, like Why is that there was no you? there was no walkthroughs. Uh, it, you know, I guess once I actually ran a a bulletin board system. Does anybody remember those things? Yeah, I remember them. Why can't I they get the goddamn pod? What's the deal? In fact, just don't 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 tell Ken. But I, I was a pirate back then. Uh, I, I I ran a sis. I was a sys op with um, the the humble guys. I, I don't know if you know that hacking group. Yeah, I remember that. The THG. And the slave lord was down in Florida, and I remember getting a early copy of Space Quest Four before it was even in the stores, before it was released. And I believe it was in black and white. It was even before they put the color into the graphics. It was just like black and white layout of the game. And we would play it. But I was just so happy to have a copy of it so early. It was just like, a, you get high off of it. It's like, yo, I got it. And then people would like send me money to like download it. <laughs> like, but the, the thing was, my phone bill was ridiculous. Because, you know, he called Florida and it would take like hours to download. <laughs> I get like an $800 phone bill. As a kid, and my dad was like, "What the 
hell, who the hell are you talking to in Florida? You know, that's like, doesn't make sense. So, uh, yeah, so that ended quick. Um, but, yeah. Sorry, I was just like really focused on getting this, be- this pod out of the spaceship. <laughs> uh, Ultima games are great back then. It's hard to get into them today, to be honest with you, because it's kind of like looking at a board game and it's like these little tile graphics and you're moving around. Um, I, I, you know, I, I if you're going to play an Ultima game, you, you should probably start with Ultima 7. I think that's the one you should play because it, 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 it's a little bit more uh, advanced. Matt, Matt says, totally remember THG, the Hubble guys. Matt also ran a couple of BBSs back in the day. And, and the couple people said everyone was a pirate back then. I think everyone was a pirate back then. I tried once I actually had a little bit of money to, like, pay buy the stuff that I... That's part of how I have this... Oh, what happened here? Oh, dude, I'm going to tell you a, a secret. Oh, um, my God. <laughs> I, I worked for Software Etc. as a kid, and I believe you're supposed to be 16 years old to work there. And I was 14, 15 or something like that. And uh, they hired me. Uh, and they gave me the keys to the store. <laughs> to open. The boss gave me the keys to the store to open and close the store, count the money, all that stuff. You ever but see this? You... Look at this. You ever see this part of this? This east, like you press the don't touch button, Marcus. Oh, that's so funny. I'm in King's Quest now. It says Ken. Did you hear something? And, and somebody, it's named Ken Williams on the chat. I don't know if it's the same Ken or somebody pretended to be him, but I think it's real Ken. Just saying hi. Enjoying seeing Space Quest. He says, "Hey oh, Ken, nice. come Glad back and talk some more." Oh, Ken says, hi, I'm only in for a minute. Roberta wants me to help bring in groceries in a few minutes. She texts one downstairs. <laughs> More people are joining the group. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of people. It says on the screen right now, Ken, did you hear something? And then Ken says, it was probably just the Gators entertaining another Space Quest player. Go back to sleep, Berta. We should have gotten Ken to say, speak those lines as well. <laughs> I didn't realize Ken had so many lines in this game. <laughs> it literally two. Ken says, it is me. I never saw that before. That's awesome. So we got so Ken never saw this Easter egg before. I remember that was there. Very cool, he says. Yeah, it nice. is very cool. I just I just did that to show through a strange quirk of fate, you've stumbled to a place beyond time, space, and dimension. You've entered the Daventry Zone. That's right, the land of King's Quest. So not help you now since you were playing Space Quest. So anyway, that, that was I, I, I really love they were doing crossovers like that. It it, it was <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant idea. A, it, like, helps advertise the game, right? Like, yeah. You know, it helps advertise the game. But it's just funny in the same time. It's, like, such comedy. I, I think in the VGA version, when you press that button, you go to, like, Conquest of the Longbow, if I remember correctly. It's been a very long time. Uh, press, well, the thing that sucks about this um, this old AGI parser, like the old AGI engine, is that time passes when you're typing. So now you have to type, like, super fast. Oh, really? Ken says, I'll ask Roberta if she wants to sign in for a minute. She was driving from the grocery store and called to get me to meet her in the garage. Ken, if you can get Roberta to sign in for a minute, you'll oh, make a lot amazing. of people very happy. That's all I can tell you. That'd be amazing. People will be super happy. Oh, and he says, okay, enjoy everyone. I'll check back after bringing in groceries. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Real real life stuff right there. All right, so uh, I'm going to, I think I'm going to, was it Corona now? Yeah, Corona. <laughs> Just give me one second, Stu. I'll be right back. Just one second. Yeah, sure, Marcus. Ken says I'll work on her back in a bit. <laughs> what else are you guys saying here? Uh, Al's Geek Lab says, working forward to Roberta's book. Sorry, I needed to refresh. Pickle Dog says, if you play on Hercules, the game would pause for you. Is that true? I used to have a Hercules card. Um, and I t- Actually, that's what I originally played Space Quest Two on. I don't remember that. It's just been such a long time, I don't recall. So maybe you're right, though, Pickle Dog. Although, the Hercules card came with a thing called SimCGA, and that's what I used to, always used to run. I don't I don't remember if these games had a native Hercules mode. I thought you had to run the Hercules card in CGA mode. But it's been a long time, I don't remember. But I, By the way, thank you for saying that, because I like, I like the geek comments, too. Those are just like, as fun to me as, super as nerdy. the geek. <laughs> that was super nerdy. That's I, fine. I, never... I love the nerd comments. This I love the... it, too. That's what I live for. I know, I, I know AdLib, like, you know, AdLib and Sound Blaster. Yeah. And we were saying before, like, basically Sierra drove the adoption of those things. I mean, I showed you before this card that I had. This, I mean, the box with no card. But, like, we bought this, like, a Sound Blaster, like, to play these games, basically. I mean, like, freaking awesome stuff. Yeah, they definitely pushed the envelope. They, they, 
I, I believe I heard either in an interview or in the book. Oh, you got one of those? You don't have the sound card in there, right? Right, I told you. I don't have the sound card. I just have the box of the discs and all that stuff. I have exactly the same problem. <laughs> I got everything is inside except the card. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, Al's Geek Lab is, is, is still geeking out. He says, the parser I'll lose to Larry, maybe Space Quest 2 would pause the game and you start typing. Really? I don't remember that. Oh, as opposed to Space Quest 1. Well, King's Quest 1, the original, that wasn't even like AGI, I don't think. It was like the prototype of AGI or something. Pickle Dog says it's so much better in native mode than SimCGA. Oh, really interesting. I don't, I didn't know that. That's, I, I, I don't have a Hercules car anymore, but I, I have to try that at some point. I never the tag of this shirt. <laughs> what did you say? I, got, I just realized I never took the tag off on this shirt. Ah, uh, that's okay. All right, let's save the game because I'm probably going to die. Corona... I was just thinking, the like, graphics look, are beautiful in this game. Look, look under the seat or something, or that's that's Space Quest Three. Look under the seat. I just love these old EGA graphics. It's just so cool. Open hatch. I wonder how did they? I wonder how they would they would hand oh. sketch it first, and then like, what? How would they code this graphics? Um, these these how would they code these graphics? I think they use like yeah. a pixel like a pixel art thing, you know, like um. You know, like uh, like Microsoft Paint or something. Not like you know what I mean. Like something where they actually did one pixel uh, at a time. Did the Ken design it? Did he like make that? Like did he build that tool? So the original, the original like high res adventures. Ken built the, the tools for Roberta to make the graphics, and later on, other people make the graphics for the AGI stuff. Um, so brand, I was about to say Brandon Bloom would probably know better than anybody else who's in the chat right now. And he says for AGI games, vector draw commands in sequence. But who, but how did they? But Brandon, how did they? How did the artists actually create the graphics? Is what Marcus? They probably have this hand sketch it first, and then like, did they trace it out somehow with, uh, like, wasn't they using a plotter of some sort, some kind of plotting tool? I don't know. I mean, I know for like the VGA graphics, they basically drew it like artwork, and then they they scanned it somehow. But for the EGA stuff, I have no idea. Uh, Brandon, oh yeah, says, Brandon says Brandon says they in house tools. Yeah, they had to have in house tools. That's that's what it had to be. Yeah. Because I just remember when I was playing around with Pascal, I'm like, yo, this is hard. Wasn't there something else supposed to get here? Yeah, you're supposed to get the crystal, right? Yeah. Isn't there also like a... Like a... Glass shard? Isn't there... I got the glass. Isn't there also supposed to be like an oxygen tank? Was it water? Uh, yeah, like water or something. Like, yeah. Was, I don't know. The, the VGA version, it's like dehydrated, dehydrated water. Oh, Ken says Versa, Versa Rider, a tablet. <laughs> and he oh, says, back in, back in 15 minutes, Roberta's calling me. And Alski collapses. There you go. The source says it, Versa Rider. And Pickle Dog said, Ken answered. <laughs> I, I, I may have, like, let me go back, because I, I think there's something else you got to get in the pod, right? Look pod. Oh, sir, there we go. Survival kit. Get okay, kit. That's what it was. Open kit. Takes a xenon army knife and a can of dehydrated water. There you go. I really can't help you because it's the delay is like killing me. It really, delay is that bad? Well, I know also you typing fast and moving quick. Oh, I'm a slow player. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll slow down. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I was, where are we I was, now? Oh, I was, we're on xenon. I, oh, okay. I was so, <laughs> I was so busy. You're, you're, I'm so busy talking to you, asking you questions and stuff. All right, we're we're on we're on. I'll, I'll set the stage for you. We're on Corona. We just landed and crashed. We're getting out of the pod. It's called a survival name, kit. Corona. What did you say? <laughs> what, an, what an unfortunate name, Corona. Well, I'm sure it was an intentional name. I gave the piece of glass. If I can see it, look pod. Uh, search pod. How do you do it? Uh, why can I see it now? Look pod. Okay, walk around, dude. Okay, now... Are we going to the bar? Because I'm like... <laughs> I'm like <laughs> you can go start drinking already. You don't have to like. Uh, you don't have to get to the well, bar. Like, Roger Wilco wants to drink too. You know? Pickle Dog says the lag is heinous. Really? It's that? It's that bad? Like it's not? I don't know what the hell's going on. Then it shouldn't be. It shouldn't. It, YouTube must be screwing up because there's only supposed to be like a 10 second lag. So if it's a bigger lag than that, it's it's on the YouTube side. Unfortunately, it was the only we can do about it right now. But uh, all right. Going to die. I'm saving it's the not game. lagging. It's just a delay. It's. Uh, well, I don't a, see a. I think that's what he lag. means. Is the delay. Oh, uh, okay. But the, the, he's not going to hear your voice as quickly as I am. Well, that's true. So, um, 
Pickle Dog. Oh, sorry. Brandon and Epic Potato said, and Matt said the stream is fine. So, all right. I don't remember which way we're supposed to go. Go down. Go down? I'm guessing. Okay. Go down again. Go to the right. And, and, you, and if you speed it up, it goes like hyper fast. Right. right that's the problem. There's actually. Uh, see, good, good call there. You told me to go down. That was. That was <laughs> you just become a vertical meal for the local welcoming. <laughs> All right, that's, that's okay. That's oh, what, nice. Look at that. That's why we saved the game. You can go actually, so if this fast, and there's, there's also fastest, I think. Is there or there isn't to this one? I thought there Oh, shoot. Oh, that's a mistake. All right, we got to... <laughs> we just were killed by the spider droid. That's one way to speed run it. Yeah, let's not do that. Let's go back. All right, I'm going to try to go to the right this time. The pickle talks is not down, not down. Yeah, it was right. <laughs> Alright, we're going right. We're going right this time. Oh, not down. Oh, whoops. Alright, here we go. But, you know, I, I said it on purpose just to show off that death. Oh, interesting. Brandon Bloop says 1.0x doesn't have fastest. They changed fast to fastest. They made a new fast. Okay, oh, that's interesting. I remember using the... Okay. That explains why the fast is not really helpful. Oh, wait. Because... Isn't there a droid that's going to come? It, it, just, it just did a second ago, remember? <laughs> I didn't see it. <laughs> Well, it came so fast, and the graphics were going so fast that it killed us, and I had to restore the game. So that that was the problem. Holy moly! So, uh, so while we're while we're walking around, wandering the desert here, um, okay, I can at least save the game here. I, I don't know if I'm supposed to go up here or what, but uh, I know you can kill the, the spider droid this way. But so there's um, a couple of ways to kill the spider droid, right? Right. You can you can go to the you can take it like lure it to the Orat. But I don't remember where the Orat is. I think it's still to the right of here. Or you can push that block down on it. The block uh, one is the easiest one. I Well, they're both probably just as... Oh, shoot. There's Spider right droid way. incoming, huh? Where's Where's the cave? Oh, it's right here. This is the cave. I didn't even see the cave. This is an opening here. Sorry, Sierra fans. I'm used to playing the VGA version. Excuses, excuses. All right, so here's the cave. Oh, you can also... Oh, it's not here. I thought this is the cave. Oh my god. Brandon's is up one screen. So you can also kill the Orat by throwing the, the water at it. The dehydrated right. water, right? And it drinks it and, and blows up. Up one screen. Okay, here we go. Pickle Dogs' says block is much harder. So what should we... Which, chat, what should we do? Oh, shoot. <laughs> Alright, uh, we're going to do this. Oh, why don't you go up that little pathway, right? Oh... We'll Here try both. The... I don't even see the aura. At. Wait a minute. Where's the aura? At? <laughs> Planet Boo says, "Wait, what the heck? Where's the aura?" At? <laughs> it's a bug Maybe because the droid is in there. Aura does not appear until after you get your mission. Oh, uh, uh, I didn't know that. In the in the original game, in the, the the remake, it appears right away. All right, I guess we have to restore it now. We can't get by the droid. He's gonna kill you. Yeah, I think he's gonna kill me. That's fine. I'll 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 let him let him kill you. Let's see what happens. Oh, well, it's too late. I should have done that. I'm sorry. So I already I already restored it. You're right. Why did I, why did I do that? I'm I'm stupid. So, so you go up that pathway right there. Go yeah, I'm waiting for the droid to show up, and then I'll go up the path. Because at least way we can. Well, I figure this way we can push the thing on top of him. Um, or we can try at least. So, uh, what's it called? Uh, how do you feel about working on a game with Ken Williams? It's it's game changer. Dare, dare I say? <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a game changer. Um, man, I'm really lucky. Uh, I, I'm learning an unbelievable amount of skills. But besides the skills, uh, the their work ethic and the, the passion that they have is 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 contagious and uh you know he called me a workaholic and I, i'm just trying to keep up with him you know he's he really uh, pushes the pace uh, incredibly and it's um you know we're we're as far as we are right now with the game because of him um uh, he's troubleshooting so much code right now and things to, to figure out. I, I'm sure the average coder would take weeks and weeks and he'll figure it out in a day or two and have uh, one of the most difficult parts figured out and coded and playable. 
And I'm just like, wow. <laughs> I'm like, that looks awesome. Good job, Ken. You know, it's like, it's like amazing how fast he, he operates and, and he doesn't quit until he solves the problem. So, I mean, it's like... It's a big inspiration for me, for sure. Is he, is he like, is he tough to work for? Is he, like, pushing really hard, or is it, like, in a good way? No, no, he's, he's, he's very patient. And I don't think he was patient back in the day, but, you know, like I was saying in the beginning, I warned him, I said, look, I'm not a game designer. I never was a game designer, but I want to be. And, you know, I'll do the best I can. So he was very patient with just me understanding certain parts of the process of developing a game and I would say the first month doesn't even count because we were just trying to figure out how to how to save whatever work we were doing and sharing it to each other there was several redos just because things were we were overwriting each other and ruining the game like breaking the game and uh, uh, you know so the first month I don't think really counts uh, it was just trying to figure out how to the process of working together uh, uh, vir you know like virtually I, I, I over the internet and um, so yeah he figured it out we figured it out and really he figured it out and I'm, I'm lucky to be on this ride I really am it's pretty awesome it's pretty amazing and I, I don't know why this stupid droid is not uh, going to the right it's, I think I just, just was be patient yeah just it just wait. was going to the right place that I went the wrong way so Matt Williams says question for Marcus I don't even know what this means would Ken define you as oh I know what it means from his book <laughs> would Ken define you as a B type an A type or a triple A type <laughs> I actually just screenshotted him saying that I'm an A A A plus type. Really? So there you go. <laughs> I actually somewhere he wrote that. And I took a screenshot. I was like, I'm saving that. Brian, <laughs> Brian Pierce. Honestly, honestly, that stuck with me. In the I read the book and that actually stuck with me. And I was like, I gotta be A A A. I gotta be a triple A. I really do. I'm a triple M. I gotta be a triple A now. So yeah, that really stuck with me when I read that. And um, you know. Reading the book, I got the impression that he's a very fair guy. That he's a really, and, and especially at this time, you know, after writing the book, and you could just tell that he he um, he's just the person I want to I want to work with, work for, and just I want to learn from him. And uh, it's, it's great. Very, very, very well, that's awesome. And, and your friend Brian Pieroff said definitely your triple A plus. So, uh, <laughs> <Thanks, Brian. laughs> um, epic. What is it? Oh, I thought like I had a chance here. Adriel Isaac says, Good luck to you and Ken on the game, Marcus. I really look forward to playing it. Don't forget Roberta. I'm telling you, she's gonna appear. And she's gonna be like, oh, Marcus, I need this to be like this, like this, like this. It's gonna happen in a big, major way. And she already has, in a way. So, don't kid yourself. This is her, her name doesn't end up on a press release and plastered everywhere and, and not be part of the game. So that's awesome. So so chat. Um, I think a bunch of chat people in the chat don't want me to wait for the spire droid. They want me to try to go go just keep going. Just chat. What do you want to do? Do you want to should I keep waiting and hope that I get this guy, or should I uh, keep going and get the ORAT method? Yeah, when Roberta jumps in, it will be even better. I agree with that. Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, she knows what she's doing and, and she, you know, she says that she doesn't know what the, the people today is going to like or want. I, I don't think so. I think she, she, she definitely knows what's a good game and, and what's a good story. Yeah, no, listen, Roberta. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How come I fall after that too? What's yeah, I was gonna say, do the ORAT method where you where you where you give him the water. All right, that's what I'm gonna do. Oh no, you bro no, not give him the water. You gotta. How do you how do you how do you? Get him you, to... you gotta well, you, you get lead lead this. The, if you if you drop the rock on the spire droid, that you give the 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 water to the ORAT. Hey Ken, it's back. How you doing, Ken? No, I'm not. <laughs> no, you're not. We see you. <laughs> no. Oh, there I am. <laughs> Um, well, I couldn't talk her into coming in. Oh, that's too bad. No. Well, I just thought I'd come in and wave hello anyhow, but nope. Well, well tell, tell Roberta that we all love her, even if she won't come in the chat. Tell her, we, she, a, lot, a lot of her fans are here. They're very disappointed, but they still love her anyway. So, you can tell her that. <laughs> I mean, that'll make, give her a guilt trip. <laughs> well, you know what it is? I've got YouTube going, so I'm hearing you twice. Yeah, there's an echo. 
Now I can understand. Oh, sorry. No, I, I said tell Roberta that all of her fans here love her regardless if she comes or not. And we okay. understand if she doesn't want to, but like, you know, everybody loves her anyway. Maybe you'll guilt her a little bit and she'll come. <laughs> you just told her. She's very happy. All right, good. Okay, well, I'll, I'll let you continue with the show. All right, Ken, thanks for stopping by again. Okay. Good to see you, man. <laughs> maybe maybe we'll have to convince her brother to show up at some point. I, I, what do we do here? Look, uh, look, poll, look, statue. Oh, just walk up? Ah, oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Brandon. So where are you at right now? Because I have the delay. You're at, right, right. I, oh, just, you gotta... I just went inside the underground thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, you went down. Okay. Yeah, I just went inside there. Um, like, literally, I haven't played this before. Adriel Isaacs from... This is M. Seamer said, Orad is a baller. <laughs> I think that's really funny. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, a bunch of people were happy that Ken came back, so maybe maybe he'll come back again. He's probably still watching the stream, so like uh, I'm assuming, so maybe he'll, maybe he'll hear he'll hear all the cries for him and he'll come back or who knows. But he's also yeah, here. Everybody's, everybody's got to cheer for Roberta. Come on, Roberta! <laughs> hey, Roberta, please come, Roberta. We love you. King's Quest number one. Woo -woo. <laughs> what do you what do you do here? This is like a... oh, you have to crawl. I know this. You don't you don't want to walk across it. You have to go against the wall. Against the wall. Yeah. You have to walk against the wall. I see, okay. Because in the VGA version, there's like a sticky plant that you give the, the tentacles or something. Wasn't there like a... Oh, I, wasn't there a thing you're supposed to stick in here also? Like a rock to, or something like that? Oh, right. Look at the other Doesn't screen. Doesn't that kill you? Epic Potato says go back to the other screen. All right, we're going, we're going Epic Potato. No plant puzzle, the original. You, Pickle Dog says you the stone on the ground the rightmost screen. All right, we're, we're going back. Oh, there it is. It's not, it doesn't even look like a stone. It looks like a, like I don't know, like a cow patty or something. Look, rock. Okay, get rock. Done. You need a rock, Matt says. So yeah, um. This game, this game is a pretty awesome game. Um, and so, do you want to show what you have? I think you, do you, did you, did you, you also have the original version, don't you? Do you have the black box version, Marcus? Yeah, I, um, I have to. I, I put it in the, in a storage bin to keep it safe. I didn't pull it out. I don't worry but, about it then. Yeah, I do have it, but I, let me see. I have. Uh, hold on. Pickle Dog says I you get can... another Macintosh version. Oh, nice. Yeah, I got another Macintosh version of it. But... So, Pickle Dog says you can take the plants in this version, but they don't do anything. You don't even get points for picking them up. And then Al's Geek Lab said, I interviewed Ken earlier this year just before the book came out. It was so great to talk to him. It was a shame Roberta was unable to chat at the time. I think Roberta's a little bit shy. <laughs> she doesn't really do many interviews. Like, if she would have came on, it would have been epic. Well, you know, it's always another, another time, right? I actually just saw like a, a highlight like, to show you how ignorant I am about all what I'm involved in, and maybe it's better off that I am. I just saw um, a highlight on High Score. Is it called like the High Score series on Netflix? And it was like Roberta was like featured on it, right? Like she pulled out a big pad and starts drawing out how she designs games and how she started mystery house and i'm like why haven't i seen this <laughs> i'm like why didn't i see this um so i actually gotta watch that i've never seen it have you guys seen that the high score uh series I, on netflix i heard about it i heard they were in it and i haven't seen it i think the the reviews on it were not great because like everybody liked the sierra part but then there was like some other stuff that wasn't really connected or something like that whatever it was that i saw looked awesome oh really yeah i mean i don't know about the whole I'm talking about the part with Roberta. It, was, it looked really cool. Yeah, like I said, I didn't see, I didn't see that part. I didn't see any of it, but I, I heard that part was really good. Where the hell am I going here? I'm like, I'm stuck in the back of the screen. I guess I'm supposed to go, to the, go to the top. You gotta go to the left. Yeah, yeah. yeah, left. Paolo Quattrochi says, yes, Richard Garrett was in the same episode. No, and, I don't think so, because I, I remember seeing the Richard Garrett one. I don't remember seeing Roberta in that one. Um, I believe it was the lady that designed Bard's Tale. Uh, Rebecca, Rebecca Heinemann, that one? 
I think so. I think that's the one that had Richard Garrett in it. How do you I don't know. The left? I, I, I love. Oh, Richard you put the left Garrett, up the top there. When I you, thought it was, he was wearing like a silly hat, and I don't know. I just found, I found it a little comical and not a good way. You know, I, who I Richard know. Garriott? Yeah, like that that episode. I don't know. It was okay. Uh, that was the only one I really. I, and I think I saw the one with Pac Man, the guy that designed Pac Man. But uh, you know, uh, I, I just didn't realize Roberta was on it. And when I saw the video, I just saw it today actually. The clip of it, I was like, man, I better watch this. Yeah, no, I have to see it. And so uh, Matt says great series. Lester says they feature Roberta a lot in that episode, the RPG episode. It's great. Al's Geek Lab said the Sierra part was great, but the series in general was guff. I see that means crap. Um, the problem is I can't see myself. Where the hell am I? Get, get in there. Yeah, Bard's, Bard's Tale was a great game. Sheesh. I, lo I, I loved Bard's Tale. Uh, I don't think I actually beaten Bard's Tale. Finally. But, you know, um, it also, Wasteland was in the same kind of genre, right? Like the same kind of style of, of gameplay. Uh, yeah, they're both RPGs. Wasteland was more of like a futuristic. But also the style, it almost seems like the same. Wasn't it the same? It's probably the same engine. Yeah, like the same graphic engine, right? <laughs> I just wanted to see this. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Like die on... Oh, you got sliced up. I got sliced up by the lasers. <laughs> I like how he keeps walking for a while afterwards. Yeah, that's the comedy. Yeah. In the VGA version, it's even better because the VGA version... Um, after he dies, the two guys come up on the screen and they say, like, let's see that again. And they do, like, instant replay and stuff. Oh, nice. That's pretty funny. But comedy is all about timing, right? Like, wasn't it in Space Quest 4 the, when you when the, when the you would blow up the... Uh, carry that ordinance and that grate would fly in the air and it would have, like, a certain amount of time before it came back down? <laughs> it was, like, actually good comedy, good timing. In, in which part? In, which uh, in Sp is Space Quest Four, when you carry the uh, ordnance and you, 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 oh you, yeah, right, 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 and it right, blows right. off the, the 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 metal grate and it's flying in the air for a long period of time, and then it comes back down. It's pretty is, good. Is, you know, is, I don't I don't remember the flying in the airport. I wonder if it was was that like I only played the CD version. I think I never played the floppy version. I wonder if that was only the floppy version. What's that? The, the part with the ordinance flying in the air. I just remember blowing up and dying. I don't. I don't. But maybe I just don't remember. Not it. the ordinance. It was the the the, the great. Oh, the great flies up in the air. Yeah. All right. So this is just a timing puzzle, I guess. Right. Just be careful and don't don't die. Yeah. Don't don't die. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you. I can tell you one thing. You're gonna die a lot in our game. <laughs> oh really? So it's that kind of Sierra game, eh? It's a. I when I said Sierra flavor, what do you think? <laughs> That's awesome. Are you guys looking forward to the chat to a a, uh, a real Sierra game with adventure and deaths? Gamers Grados is damn acid pools. It's, it's in both. Brand, so Brandon says it's Brandon says he remembers what you're talking about. It says it's along with your arm or something flies up in the air, and it's in both games. Maybe I just never even did it because I always knew not to take the ordinance. I think where you, you, I took it and then you put it back for more points, basically. To me, part of the fun is dying in these games. Yeah, I agree. I but agree, I love but... you know I, I love this screen that you you just want, you're on a different level right now. Oh, we were meeting the alien, huh? Sorry, we're either, you, you like the other screen I was in before? I can go back yeah. if you want. I, I just love the the layering of the graphics. It does give it a depth and makes it feel like three D. Even though it's not, you know, it's just a two-dimensional game. You, you, want, you want to go back so you can talk about it? No, it's okay. I was just pointing it out. So what's this here? Too? Oh, it's nice, nice art. So Matt, by the way, Matt made a comment before that the two, the Apple 2GS version of Space Quest is the best audio, and it does. And I actually, I, I tried it before. It actually says, um, like, when you have the alarm, it's never going doop doop. It says like. Um, so it has a word in there, like not, not warning or danger, but something like that, like intruder alert or something of that nature. That's pretty cool, but like the port itself is a little bit clunky, in my opinion. At Gamers Grasses, don't forget to turn on your translator. Yeah, I did that. So you found you want to, you want to do the voice acting for this, Marcus? <laughs> so you have found your way to my hollow chamber. What is he like, Dracula? <laughs> well, I am Transylvanian, so. <laughs> <laughs> Ken was like, yo, uh, I was like, we need a VO. He's like, you record it. And then I tried. I sent it to him with a cringe. I was like, oh, God. Yeah, Brandon says it's at Battle Stations. You're right. It's at Battle Stations. That's correct. It's not It's not that hard to understand, at least in the emulator I was using. You want to keep going with the voice acting, uh, Marcus? Or should I take a crack nah, at just, it? Just, just 
Just go for it. I uh, see. I'm sure your Transylvanian accent. I've been monitoring your travels on our planet. Blah, blah, blah. It appears you're up to plans. It appears you're up the proverbial estuary without a means of locomotion. It's an up shit's creek without a paddle. Nice. You're obviously in need of transportation. Let us see if you're worthy of our assistance. So now it's going to tell us to get the freaking ORAT part. Oh, what a, what a jerk. that's the mission. Got it. What a got jerk, it. yeah. It's like, well, it doesn't come out unless you, unless you get a mission from him. So get the, get the ORAT part. If it was easy, it wouldn't be fun. <laughs> now he sent you back. Oh, J Gamers Grotto says I should have used a Cedric voice. All right. I promise the chat that when we get back to this guy, I'll do I'll do it in the Cedric voice. <laughs> All right, so I, I basically just go back the way I came. Is that right? Let's just go back the way I came. I Stu, give me one minute. I'll be right back. Yeah, sure. Gamers Grotto wants me to use the Cedric voice. I might do that later if I get a chance. Uh, let's see. So I can only cross this thing three times, Matt said before, which is accurate. So I better do this correctly now. <sighs> oh, how come it fell down again from the sky? Like, as if like it ever wasn't there before? It's a little bit weird. Look, pickle dog! A poison is all right! The problem is, if I do the Cedric voice too much, Everybody's a leave. <laughs> Nobody likes Cedric voice, really. It's just, it's a good impression, but it's very annoying. Oh, jeez. Get out of here. So I can sneak past him. Oh, I can't use diagonal because I don't have any diagonal. Oh, no. Go, 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 go. He's going diagonal. It's not fair. Oh, man. Somebody made it to the screen. Ninja exits the building with that voice. <laughs> All right, maybe it'll work this time. Get in there. Get in there. There he is. All right. You're just in Where time to see the Orat meet his doom, hopefully. Nice. So you're bringing the droid in with it? Oh, cool. <laughs> The cave interior now features a lovely new jagged metal liberated entrails motif. The stench, whew, not even all text adventure would attempt that description. All right, so now you get the Orat part. The paddock is real, Matt says. Yeah, the paddock really is real. This this game is doesn't mess around. Can I get past here? I, mean, I have to go back this way. I like the music in the VGA version better, though. It's uh, like it's like do 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 do. Do, 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 do. When, I, when I bust it out, hold on for a second. Let's see. What's the matter? Do, 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 do. Get Orat. Get part. Okay, I got the Orat part. Now I shouldn't have to deal with worry about the spider droid anymore. Matt says, can't wait to see how many times you attempt the, scan, the Sand Skimmer arcade segment. That might be the end of the stream for the day, Matt, if, if that ends up being a disaster. We'll see, though. I'm not so bad at arcade games. I just get very freaked out by them. So, guys, um, as we play the game, any other questions you want to ask Marcus? Or, you know, yeah. if, he, if he can answer anything, he'll answer him. If he can't answer, maybe he'll, he can get Ken to answer him. So, uh, yeah. what do you think? Pickle dogs got, on the I got, upside. I got maybe another rocks. six minutes. I'm going to hang out. Another six minutes. Yep. What happens in six minutes? You turn to stone, or you're, you turn uh, to a pumpkin? I have to go back into my uh, crypt. <laughs> back to my coffin. Well, if you're if you're going to go, we can always continue a different day. I mean, I don't want you to have to leave and miss. The, but what do, you, what do you want to do? You want to you want to continue next time, or you want to be just yeah, going yeah, out? Yeah, yeah. We'll definitely we'll finish this game. All right. So we'll play a little bit more here. Matt says, question for Marcus, what tool are you using for 3D modeling? So actually a great question, I have to say. That's actually a really great question because I'm using unconventional tools. Like most uh, game designers are using Maya and uh, or Blender um, and ZBrush. I basically built the entire game in Rhino, which is what I what most people use for architecture or jewelry design or footwear design 
it's not really known as a uh, used by video game designers. So I, I'm probably one of the few people to use that to basically build out the entire game. Do I still use Blender? Yeah, I use Blender. I use ZBrush. And um, I have a bunch of other little tools and tricks and, and, and things that I do. Um, Paolo says I, he uses Rhino also, and he's also a jeweler. Yeah. That's see, interesting. It's like Rhino is... So I, I actually teach uh, 3D modeling to inner city kids in Trenton. Oh, and nice. I was And I was showing them uh, Rhino because I was explaining to them how it's versatile. It's, it's, it's not just for one thing. You can you <coughs> basically model for any kind of industry you want. Uh, and I'm proving it right now by designing a game with it. Um, and it's very affordable and it's uh, very smart and, and a great tool to use. Do you think your skills as a jeweler like are helping you make this game? Well, uh, my skills as an artist um, okay. helps me. I, I'm not just a jeweler. Um, actually, I, I I hate to say I hate jewelry. I hate <laughs> making jewelry. I don't like the business at all. Um, I never really wanted to be a. I never wake up one day and be like I want to be a jeweler. I just happen to fall into it, and because whatever I do, I go you know all in and, and falls to the wall. <coughs> I became a really great jeweler and. and Designed for Harry Winston, Van Cleef, and worked with uh, Jacob the Jeweler, uh, a bunch of different companies that were my clients, directly or indirectly. Um, you know, three Spectrum Awards, a um, bunch of stuff, and 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 worked with the top companies and top designers. And I think that's because of my art skills um, as a designer, and in my eye. Like, I remember Ken was like say talking about the game and i said the only thing i don't do is i don't do corny whatever i do it's got to be awesome you know i'll spend as much time as i possibly have to to make it awesome and i'll do whatever it takes to make it awesome and he's like well good answer so that's just my mentality in terms of being a designer and that's why i'm confident that whatever product we put out it's going to be great so um lester had a really great question do we know yet what platform the game will be released on based on how it's being developed? So, uh, it's definitely a PC game that can be ported to Nintendo Switch, PS5. Um, is it going to be state-of-the-art PS5 game? No, but it'll be a game that you can probably play on the PS5, on the Xbox, hopefully. Uh, I have some ideas of um, making ports of it for... You know how Sierra always made games for every platform yep. that it possibly could. I kind of want to do that. I kind of want to like make this game available on all the platforms that we possibly can. Well, Ken, Ken uh, mentioned Unity. Is, it, is, it, is, is Unity the, like one of the development tools? or? So Unity is the, the game engine uh, that we designed the game on. But they were asking, how, what do I model with? But I, you know, it, it, there's a difference. You've got to make the assets and then you put it into Unity, Got and it. Unity kind of keeps it all together and uh, creates the 3D environment uh, that you play. And it also has the physics, and uh, man, it's a great time to be a game designer because the tools that are available are mostly free now. Like, you can get Unity for free, you can get Blender for free, and you could be a game designer without spending a dime. Or you can get Maya for $2,000 a year, and you can get Unreal Engine and give them a 20% cut. And, and, and go that route and have like a really high-end game. So you, you have different ways and different tools that are available to you, but Unity is great. And Unity and Blender, like I was talking to a, 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 a game artist that's been designing since 1996, and we were talking about how Blender has caught up to Maya in certain regards, and a lot of people are starting to use Blender, and this is a free tool. If you guys wanna get involved in game design, man, just go and download Blender and start watching the tutorials and start making assets. So a couple couple of jokers in the chat want to know if this would be an Apple II port, Commodore sixty four port, I'm not joking, and a DOS I, port. I swear that is part of my. I have to keep this scan, <laughs> but I swear that is that is something I'm considering. That would be Amiga awesome. Port, a Commodore Amiga <laughs> port, a Commodore six. No, obviously it's not going to be the same game as the you know, but <laughs> but but the idea is. You know, when Sierra launches a game that every, you know, version is available that they can do, that, 
that's that's possible i'm thinking the same kind of logic here yeah i would like to do a converse 64 version a apple II version and put it in a plastic baggie and you know, <laughs> david david Bennett said who's the joker now Stu?" because <laughs> i because i call him a joker <laughs> Hey, I, I really, another, another good question in the chat, but first I promise I do the Cedric voice for this, so I'll do it really quickly. Oh, so you have returned! Fortunately, there's much more to you than meets the eye! <laughs> That's it, I'm not doing great further than that. So some, someone else says here, um, where was this? Uh, Matt, about, do you, I don't know, you probably don't know this yet, but he wants to know how long is the game going to be? Like, is it 40 hours, one hour, 5,000 hours? You probably don't know at this point, right? I don't know at this point. Yeah, we have to play totally test tell. it. We don't, we don't. We don't know. Um, we don't know. He's also asking, like, will will somebody with an older computer be able to play it? I'm assuming the answer to that is yes. If, if you're yeah, gonna we're going to try. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I mean, how much older? He said, like, a, like, like my crappy computer. You know, <laughs> not. He doesn't mean like from the 2000. He means like from 2015 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. That should be no problem. Again, again, we're not pushing the envelope of graphics to be. They, they just released a new Unreal Engine where it's like super realistic graphics. And, you know, maybe if this game is successful, maybe the next game we can go to that kind of state of the art kind of graphics and really push the envelope in that regards. Uh, but, you know, all I got to say is you're going to be happy with this game. I'm, I'm already happy. You, you don't have to sell me. Someone says, if you make an Apple IIe, Epic Potato, if you make an Apple IIe port, I will play it and stream it. <laughs> it, it I really want to do it. I, I, I really want to do and it. And Brandon Bloom says he can make a legit classic SCI version. So uh, <laughs> you want to reach out to him. So do you have to go, Marcus? You said you had only six minutes. You got, you got yeah, to I want to I wanna, I wanna, I wanna cut off. Uh, and um, Yes, so let's play again. We'll, we'll set a time and we'll continue the adventure. It sounds good. Uh, Stu, thank you for your time. So, guys, if you're not, if you're not, hold on, if you're not subscribed to the channel, now's the time to subscribe. If you want to see part two, more Q and A for Marcus. Let me drop something. Go on to Ken'sGame.com and register. Register because we're gonna put some exclusive news that if you register, you'll be the first to know about the game. So uh, definitely go on there and and and, and register. Um, really, really appreciate. Your times to no, it's register on kensgame.com and subscribe to the channel so you can see part two. And maybe we can even get Ken or maybe we're burned to come back for part two. Who knows? So we'll, we can work we'll, on that we'll, and see we'll, what happens. We'll try. We, we really, we really tried. This even time, if we we'll... can't, we're happy just to have you, Marcus, because you're an awesome guest and I really appreciate you being here. Really appreciate you setting this all up and uh, gracing this humble channel with uh, the presence of yourself and also. The legendary Ken Williams. So uh, you know this has been you, you awesome. You deserve it, Stu. You you've been a great friend, and uh, you know we we chat uh, about games for quite a while now, and I uh, really appreciate your knowledge and you're you're a good friend. Thank you very much. So guys, you know stick. Make sure you register on the site. Subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna save the game here. We'll pick it up next time. Probably in a few days. We'll figure out what when's a good time to continue. Whatever. Works out for for the important people here, not for not, not not one of those important people. Whatever the important people are able to make it, then we'll figure it out. And uh, thanks everyone for joining. This has been great. You guys have been awesome. We we got we still have thirty people right now live concurrent. All together, it looks like we had already one hundred and forty people in the, in the live stream, you know, in and out. So I'm sure a lot more people will watch this after the fact. So if you're watching this after the fact, make sure you comment. Let us let us know your questions. Let us know your thoughts, and we'll do this again really soon. Thanks, everybody. I'm not going to call you all by name. It's just too many people this time. But thanks, everybody, and be back. Talk to you all soon. Thank you very much. Peace out. Bye.